someone whose opinion cannot be taken lightly. Rupa Kudwa, the head of India's largest rating agency, Crisil, has earned her stripes working up the ladder of success. When I caught up with her, I began by asking her if she ever imagined she would one day land the top job at the company she only joined thanks to a twist of fate. Uh, not at all, not one bit. I think at that point, the only thing on my mind was uh, how do I get a job in Bangalore? I don't think I thought beyond that. Uh, and, um, you know, I used to be working in IDBI uh, before that for six years, uh, something that I thoroughly enjoyed. But it's just that my husband was moving to Bangalore and I, I wanted to move with him. And I, I saw some challenges in, in IDBI moving me there, and which is why I went and met Pradeep Shah, and he was kind enough to give me a job. Uh, but I must say that while there was uh, no ambition, no thought of career, uh, no big game plan in mind when I joined Crisil, other than the fact that I want to be in Bangalore, uh, within a few months of joining Crisil, there was something that told me that this is a company and here is an environment in which I think I can thrive and grow. It was also a time when Crystal was growing and it, 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 it was born out of an idea and it was growing. So did that entrepreneurial drive, that, that whole uh, atmosphere also uh, create a conducive environment for you to stick on there? I think it did. Uh, most definitely it did. Uh, there was the excitement of doing something new. There was the excitement of working with uh, very young people, all of us starting off in our careers. The entire management team was young. Uh, uh, I think Pradeep Shah would have been in his 30s at that point, which was quite unheard of mm -hmm. in uh, corporate India those days. Uh, the biggest motivating factor at that point, which I think really has defined the DNA of Crisil, was something that uh, Pradeep Shah instituted right from day one in this company which is that the most important decisions in the company, uh, which was the rating decision at that point in time, got made in an open forum, which means that anybody could walk in and hear the discussion and listen to how the rating was being arrived at, which was such a huge contrast from what I had myself experienced and what I had seen people around me experiencing. Those days we were the new kids on the block. We just did the work and we sent up the work and we didn't know what really happened behind closed doors and how the decisions got made. And it was really revealing and empowering and exciting uh, to feel that you could be a part of the entire decision-making process. Stepping back a little, you passed out of IIM Ahmedabad in, in, in 86. Uh, That's right. A lot of, uh, lot of you who are now CEOs uh, and heads of companies started off in the mid 80s you know uh, if, if you see this is the generation that's come to its own what were the triggers uh, what were the motivators that made you go into an IIM Ahmedabad because that's when the whole uh, you know battalion of women walked into banking <laughs> in the private sector at least so when you talk of our generation and people who entered the workforce uh, in the latter half of the 80s and maybe the early 90s uh, there's one thing that always strikes me. I think no generation of people has been uh, as fortunate to benefit from the big boom in the Indian economy that we saw in the 20 years after that. Mm. Uh, the lift that all of us got, and this is men and women, not just women. The lift that our careers got in that 20 year period, I don't think the generation before us saw. And frankly, I don't think that kind of a trajectory is, is something that the next generation is going to see. So I think we were singularly fortunate to be in the workforce at a point in time which saw a complete transformation of this country. It was the post-liberalization era. It was new types of companies coming in. So if you look at uh, a company like Crisil, there was no promoter. Uh, it was a dispersed set of shareholders. You did have uh, a family owning a majority or a significant stake, or one institution holding a majority or a very significant stake. Uh, companies in India at that point in time were, uh, were, were more promoter driven. Whereas here was a company that was completely, and, and not just Crystal, many companies that came up at that point were completely professionally run. I think their whole attitude uh, 
to employees to growth to entrepreneurship to innovation was very different. And I think we benefited in many ways from being there at that point in time. Tell me something, do you think that tra that, that was a, a one wave kind of a move? What do you think uh, uh, there, those many opportunities still exist for kids coming out or their trajectory could be as easy as, as yours? I think the opportunities for, 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 for kids today and for women today in particular are higher than they've ever been before. Mm -hmm. But I think there are, there are challenges as well, right? I think it was a little easier for us. I think the point you made about the trajectory is, is, is very right. I'm not quite sure whether the trajectory will be quite the same as, as it was for us. I think for us it was largely about being in the right place at the right time, in addition to doing things well and working hard and all of it, which, which is always important. But so while the opportunities for the next generation are greater, more diverse, uh, and I believe the next generation is far, far more focused and career oriented than, than someone like me at least ever was, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's tougher for them. I think the uncertainties in which they operate in are far, far higher. The environment is much more difficult. The level it's much more competitive than it was in our time. Talking about not being career-minded, Rupa, you, you joined Crystal because you wanted a break in Bangalore. Since then, you've always traveled also with your husband, you know, in different postings. Uh, that's not something that ambitious women relate to these days. They think that it, it's work and it's not the balancing act. How important was this balancing act in your own career growth? To be quite honest, I would say that for the first 14, 15 years of my career, I wouldn't really call myself an ambitious person mm -hmm. or I wouldn't really call myself a career oriented person. Uh, it's not that I was seeking any kind of balance. I was just really enjoyed what I was doing. I loved the company that I work for and I never really thought about what all of this means for my career. Mm -hmm. The thing that was always important for me though was to do everything that I did really, really well. Um, uh, and, and particularly focus on doing things well that others couldn't do. Mm -hmm. so, so all along, I think I, I, was, I was a good analyst. I would say I, I was one of the, uh, an above average analyst. But was I the best analyst in Crystal? I would not say, say that at all, far from it. Mm -hmm. uh, we had so, we, we had and we continue to have so many excellent and so many bright people. So I think my focus was always on doing things really well that I could do differently from others. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, for the first 15, 16 years of my career, um, uh, to be very candid, I wouldn't really say I ever thought about where is my career going or where do I want to get in life and Seriously? do I want to be CEO of Crystal someday? No. Women are driven, they are focused, they're more ambitious. I think in, in many cases I've seen women who are more ambitious than the men and, and that's nice to see.